in case somehow somebody missed it, Gardner Minshew is the rookie quarterback for the Jacksonville Jaguars. He got the opportunity to play for the first nine weeks of the NFL season because during the very first game of the year for the Jacksonville Jaguars, their starting quarterback, Nick Foles, got hurt. And recently, as of actually today, Gardner Minshew was benched. They are now playing Nick Foles again. He's back. He's healthy. And uh, I have a lot to say about Gardner Minshew being benched. We'll talk about that later in this topic. Um, But first, I want to generally just break down his play and talk about what the film says when I watch Gardner Minshew. This is what the film says about Gardner Minshew. So what I see on tape is that Gardner Minshew should be, he should be a starting quarterback in the NFL. It's a shame for him to not be playing. Uh, I'll discuss the situation in Jacksonville. He got benched. We'll talk about that in a couple of minutes. But to be very clear, Gardner can play. In fact, if he was in Pittsburgh, he would be the Steelers starting quarterback right now, today, easily over Mason Rudolph. He does so many things right. He's a distributor. He gets the ball to his playmakers. He doesn't force the ball into coverage. He's not afraid to check down and take short completions when that's all the defense gives him. But he's also got a great arm. It'd be very easy for us to say, well, Gardner Minshew just throws check downs and throws underneath. That's not the case. That is not true. He's got a great arm. He can beat man coverage. Uh, In college, I was concerned about his arm strength. Well, he made subtle changes to his mechanics over the offseason. Between his last year in college and this rookie year in the NFL, he made some changes. He now uses his legs and his core to generate more force throwing the ball Um, He's got more zip on the ball. His arm is now stronger than it was in college. And here's the kicker. The dude is great at reading defenses. He understands matchups. He puts the ball in the right spot. He's not a one-read quarterback. He can look at his first read, then go, hey, that's not open. What about my second option? What about my third option? What about my fourth option? He regularly does that. Gardner Minshew is not, I repeat, is not a one-read quarterback. Watch Gardner's eyes. He regularly throws to a second, third, and even fourth read. Gardner Minshew is also great, fantastic within the pocket. He is so good at making subtle movements. Uh, One step to the left, a step forward, maybe a step to the right, or a slide up in the pocket diagonally. He's great at moving within the pocket. That eight yard by roughly eight yard area where linemen are protecting him, Gardner Minshew thrives in that area. He does a great job maneuvering within the pocket, keeping his eyes downfield, resetting his feet, and throwing accurately downfield. This is something that Mason Rudolph, the Steelers quarterback, really, really struggles with. Gardner Minshew is light years ahead of him, and I am so impressed when I watch the tape. And then there's this one thing Gardner Minshew does. I call it his X factor. This is the thing that makes Gardner Minshew Gardner Minshew. It's an ability that is incredibly rare. No, it's not just his leadership. Um, you know, I, uh, I, I, look, I know I love leadership. I talk about it all the time. Gardner Minshew's ability to extend plays is something that, I mean, Russell Wilson, Patrick Mahomes, Deshaun Watson, and then, then there's Gardner Minshew. I mean, he belongs with those names. The way Gardner Minshew is able to extend plays, keep his eyes downfield, I cannot even properly describe the amount of times I watched him turn a bad situation into a big gain and a big play downfield. He is one of the most unpredictable quarterbacks I have ever watched in my entire life. If you were to make an analogy about Tom Brady as a quarterback, you would say that Tom Brady is like the accountant of quarterbacks. He's kind of boring. He sits at a desk forever, does the same thing every single day. But guess what? He's very successful. On the other hand, Gardner Minshew is like an artist. Picture Gardner Minshew painting in flip-flops in his apartment and making incredible artwork. Don't get confused. Gardner Minshew can be a traditional quarterback who wins from the pocket, but his best moments, Gardner Minshew's best moments, come when he's running around outside the pocket and improvising. Take a touchdown against the Jets, for example. He drops back. Nobody's open. What do you do in this situation? What he does is keep the play alive, keeps his eyes downfield, and waits until somebody eventually does come open and he throws a touchdown. That's what Gardner Minshew does over and over and over again. He makes plays in all kinds of creative ways. 
He has underhand throws. He has weird plays where he runs around and avoids sacks. And for the person in their living room, the person watching football on the television, he's just a joy to watch. It's a pleasure. Now, there is a downside to Gardner Minshew. Number one is that his creativity doesn't always work. Uh, If you want to be a creative, spontaneous player at quarterback, your teammates have to help you. If you're going to make a weird shovel pass that your running back doesn't expect, he has to step up to the plate and catch the ball when it hits him in the hands. His improvisation doesn't always work. But more importantly, the big flaw with Gardner Minshew's style of play is that he holds on to the ball arguably way too long. In fact, I think you could say it is too long, but you're willing to live with it because of the positives that it brings. If you want all the good, fun, exciting, unpredictable plays that Gardner Minshew can make happen, then you need to be willing to pay the price. Sometimes he'll just hold on to the ball way too long. He'll get sacked or he'll get hit as he's throwing and fumble And the results are bad. The results are turnovers. The results are gigantic losses where you lose 8 yards, 12 yards, or turn the ball over entirely. But let me be very, very clear. The person I'm describing sounds a lot like Johnny Manziel. He is not Johnny Manziel. He's far better from the pocket, and he doesn't throw ugly interceptions. His flaw, his fatal flaw, is he holds onto the ball too long where he either loses yards occasionally or he literally fumbles because he's running around behind the line of scrimmage and he gets hit and doesn't expect to hit. That's it. Gardner Meach has only thrown four interceptions this season, and I can actually only find three of them on tape. It's very odd. I've never had this problem where it's listed that he throws two interceptions in his second game against the Houston Texans. I can't actually find the second interception. One interception was tipped off of his receiver's hands, Literally, his interception, the one I could find against the Houston Texans, was a bad pass. He's standing in the pocket. He just threw a high pass. It wasn't accurate. He got picked off. And then he had an interception against the Saints because of a miscommunication where the receiver stopped. He threw the ball like the receiver was going to keep running. Something went wrong there. My point is that his interceptions are not horrible, awful decisions. He does not. He does not force the ball into coverage. If nobody's open... He will either check down, and if the check down's covered, or if he can't make it happen, or if there's pressure coming to Gardner Minshew, he'll run around, he'll extend the play, he'll keep his eyes downfield, and create a play downfield. The one thing he does not do, I repeat this over and over again, Gardner Minshew does not force the ball into coverage trying to throw to receivers that are not open. He does not do that. Now, sometimes his improvisation does lead to negative plays, but I think, honestly, his style of play brings far more positives than negatives. Now, my guess is that his style of play made the Jacksonville coaching staff somewhat uncomfortable, and there are a lot of reasons you can list to justify benching Gardner Minshew in favor of Nick Foles. Uh, Number one is that the Jacksonville Jaguars paid Nick Foles a ton of money this offseason. They paid him to be a starting quarterback. The Jaguars are not paying Nick Foles to sit on the bench behind a sixth-round draft pick. Number two is that uh, the Jaguars' offensive coordinator is a guy named John DiFilippo. He has history with Nick Foles. Nick Foles and John DiFilippo worked together the year Nick Foles and the Eagles won a Super Bowl. The Jaguars made a very conscious decision. We're going to bring in Nick Foles. We're going to bring in John DiFilippo. They've worked together. They've had success together. We're going to have that success again here in Jacksonville. That has been the plan with the Jaguars. I mean, look, they won a Super Bowl together. Here's the other thing. Number three is that the Jaguars are not winning a lot of games. They have four wins this year. If Gardner Minshew was 8-2 and two and was doing phenomenal all year, he would not get benched. It kind of reminds me, actually, of the way that uh, Dak Prescott became the starting quarterback in Dallas. He replaced Tony Romo, a really good, well-established quarterback. But Gardner, but uh, Dak Prescott kept winning. And he kept winning, winning, and he kept winning, and he kept winning, and the team didn't want to screw it up because it was working. If Gardner Minshew was winning a lot of games, he wouldn't have gotten benched, but he wasn't. And then number four, I think a big part of this is Gardner Minshew has an unpredictable play style. Uh, he generates some negative plays that I think teams are uncomfortable with. And, uh, like for example, there's a play against the Houston Texans where He refuses to slide. For whatever reason, it's first down. It's not like it's a huge down where he needs the yards. He's running. He refuses to slide. He gets hit. The ball gets knocked away. It's hard for a coach 
to coach a guy like Gardner Minshew who succeeds so much because of his improvisation outside of structure, right? It's uh, the coach can't manage it because the guy is succeeding with his own magic rather than the coach's play calling. That's really difficult. Now, when you combine all of these factors, it makes sense to me, okay, that's why the Jacksonville Jaguars are not playing a really good quarterback, Gardner Minshew, a guy who's polarizing, who's really successful, who the fans love. It all makes sense to me, and I don't blame the Jaguars for benching Gardner Minshew in favor of Nick Foles. Uh, In my opinion, though, Gardner Minshew has to be, of all the quarterbacks ever benched, I think Gardner Minshew has to be playing at the highest level of any quarterback ever to be benched in NFL history. Literally, I don't think any quarterback has played as well as he has and gotten benched ever. It's very bizarre. It's very interesting. But a lot of factors behind the scenes are playing into this decision. Um, And I wish them luck. Now, number one is a lot of teams in the NFL would be lucky and grateful to have Gardner Minshew. I think the Redskins would love to have him. I think that the Steelers would love to have him. There There are a lot of teams around the NFL that say, Gardner Minshew, that rookie contract, absolutely, let's take him. He can play. We can build around him. So I'm curious to see how the Jaguars do without Gardner Minshew. They have Nick Foles coming in, and the thing they're going to lose, the number one thing, I think some people think it's a positive. They'll have fewer turnovers. uh, They will be more predictable. But the number one thing they will lose, for better or worse, is Gardner Minshew's ability to extend plays. Will that hurt the Jaguars or will that help the Jaguars? That is what we will find out. They don't have a quarterback now who can escape a sack, run around, keep his eyes downfield, and turn a loss of yardage into a gigantic 40-yard touchdown pass. Nick Foles, for all the good things he does, he's good in structure, I believe, I hope so. The one thing Nick Foles cannot do that Gardner Minshew can do is extend a play, run around, turn a negative play, a loss, an eight-yard sack, turn a play like that into a 40-yard touchdown pass. Will the Jaguars regret benching Gardner Minshew? That's a narrative I'm really excited to find out. But that is why I love watching Gardner Minshew. He's a great leader. Uh, I also met him once in college. Um, I was filming for Pac-12 Network at the time, their daily show, whatever it was. And I got to be on set with Gardner Minshew. And he told me, I'm going to read the quote word for word. He said, life is an adventure, and I'm just trying to make the most of it. And it seems like to me, Gardner Minshew sure did make the most of his adventure and his time playing quarterback for the Jacksonville Jaguars. I would be shocked if we don't see him start an NFL game again next year or later this year. Who knows? In my opinion, Gardner Minshew is a starting quarterback for some team in the NFL in the future, whether it's the Jaguars or not. The talent is there. He's incredibly gifted, and he does some special stuff that just cannot be coached. My name is Zach Schaumler. This is my podcast, Strong Opinion Sports. It's my favorite thing in the entire world. And I want to be very clear, open, and transparent. My YouTube channel is monetized. What that means is that some of my videos make money through ad revenue. Now, it's fewer than you think. A lot of my videos get claimed. But in the past, I've received donations from Patreon and PayPal. PayPal.me forward slash Zach Schaumler. Patreon.com forward slash Zach Schaumler. And so because I'm making ad revenue, it feels weird to just get donations. I wanted to give something back. I want to give people a reward for supporting me on Patreon. So now you can submit questions. If you give me a dollar a month, you can submit questions to a pool of questions on Patreon. I look at all the questions on Patreon. I use my eyeballs. I make a joke about it. Uh, And I pick the top couple questions at the end of every single episode. And I read them and answer them on a segment called Ask Zach. Now that's for people who have money. They want to support me. If you have no money to give, I totally understand. I've been a broke college kid myself. Um, But if you believe in me and if you believe in my dream and you still want to help me, please help me grow by telling your friends about the show. Share it on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, maybe a screenshot. You put it on your Instagram story. Help me grow by telling your friends about the show. My name is Zach Schaumler. Thank you so very much and have a great day.